Hey there folks, my name's Alan, and in today's Final Fantasy XIV guide, we're going to be taking a look at the job Paladin. We're going to go over what its abilities do, how it works, and hopefully give you a better understanding of the job. So let's jump right in. Okay, to start us off on our Paladin adventure, we're going to be taking a look at the single target abilities of the Paladin. So we're going to move over to the target dummy and we're going to go down the list one by one. Starting off on your Paladin, you're going to have the ability Fast Blade. This is a 200 potency ability and it's your general combo starter. Now that is going to combo into Riot Blade, which by default has a 100 potency. However, when comboed off of Fast Blade, it jumps up to a 300 potency with an MP restoration. So you would hit Fast Blade, and then you would get your combo to Riot Blade. Now, this is gonna open up two combos depending on your level. The first one is going to be Royal Authority. Now note, when you're at a lower level, this will be the Rage of Halone. It has an initial 100 potency, combos off of Riot Blade to boost up to a 550 potency. And, when you use it, it'll give you three stacks of Sword Oath. The second one being Goring Blade. This is going to be another 100 potency that combos off of Riot Blade with a 390 potency and a damage over time effect when you do the combo. And that will be an 85 damage tick for 21 seconds. So this is nice to get up when you first start your rotation. You'll go through your Fast Blade, your Riot Blade, and then you'll come over to Goring Blade and get that dot ticking. And then you'll hit Fast Blade, Riot Blade, Royal Authority, and then you'll come over here and you'll have Atonement. Because of Royal Authority, you have three stacks of Atonement that you can use for 550 potency, and it restores MP. This can only be used under the effect that is given to you after using Royal Authority, which is named Sword Oath. The next single target ability that you're going to have is Requiescat. This deals a potency of 150, increases up to 550 potency as you near maximum MP. So it gets stronger with the more mana that you have. The additional effect is it increases your attack magic and healing magic potency by 50%, if your current MP is at 80% or higher. And it allows each spell to be cast immediately. So what you're going to do with this is you're going to hit Requiescat, and then it'll move into Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit deals unaspected magic damage with a potency of 350. Now for this, this is going to be one of the strongest and hardest hitting parts of your Paladin combo. Not only that, but when activate it, and at level 80, it opens up Confetier. This is a move that does 800 potency to your main target and all enemies nearby it. So typically, the way you want to use this is you hit Requiescat, you hit Holy Spirit 1, 2, 3, 4 times, and that leaves you with just enough time to use Confetier which deals a very heavy hit to end the overall combo. Moving down the line, we have three more primarily single target moves that we're going to go into, and then we're going to touch on your gap closer. Spirits Within does a 100 potency attack on a 30 second cooldown. It is also an off global cooldown, so you can weave that in between any of your other attacks. As your HP nears maximum, it jumps up to a 370 potency, and it also restores mana. Then you have Shield Lob, which is your ranged attack pull. It deals 120 potency and increased enmity to help you grab mobs or a boss that may be out of reach. And then we have your in-kit stun. This is Shield Bash. Shield Bash is 110 potency, with the additional effect to stun. And you'll primarily just use it for those stuns when you need to. For the final single target move, we have Intervene. 
Intervene has a 15 yalm range with a 30 second cooldown time and it is just an excellent move to get the target from range and just move around the map a little bit faster. With the single target part of our rotation covered, we're going to take a look at our AoE. So to start things off, as a Paladin, your base AoE is going to be Total Eclipse, which you get at level 6, and Prominence, which comes around at level 40. So at first, you will just have Total Eclipse, which is a 120 potency to all enemies that are around you. And that will hit you in a 360 degree circle to help you gather enemies. Now, when you do get that combo, it will turn into Prominence, which combos into 220 potency with an MP restore. Now moving on to your level 50 ability, Circle of Scorn. This is a 120 potency with a damage over time of 35 potency per tick, and it'll last for 15 seconds. This is another great move for if you're running into a large group of enemies and just want to get that initial enmity up. Now, there is an AoE ability that works off of Requiescat, which we saw earlier. And that is going to be Holy Circle. Holy Circle is a 250 potency to all enemies around you. And typically, you will need to cast it if you need to use it. However, when you pop Requiescat, like we're about to do here, you can hit Requiescat and then you can get off about four of these, just like the first move. And once you get that first one off, you can hit Confettier for a large AoE strike. But that is going to cover your basic AoE as a Paladin. It is about four to five buttons if you count Confettier, but they all will get the job done for you. Next up on our list, we're going to look at your defensive and your one offensive cooldown that you're going to want to familiarize yourself with as you go through your journey. The first place we're going to start off is Sheltron, and it costs 50 Oath Gauge. Now, your Oath Gauge is this blue bar here. When that gets to 50 and 100, you can use Sheltron. And upon use, you will get 6 seconds where you block all incoming attacks. This is your Paladin Bread and Butter defensive ability. This will be the one that comes up the most, and the one you end up using the most during any encounter. Moving on, we have Rampart, which is a shared roll ability. Rampart is a flat 20% damage reduction on a 20 second duration, and it's just very good if you need to soak a little bit extra damage. Then we have Sentinel, which is your strongest percentage base Paladin cooldown, which is a flat 30% damage reducer by 15 seconds. Also another good ability for if you're taking a heavy hit or just room-wide damage is very high. Then we're going to have Divine Veil. Upon recovery of HP via healing magics cast by yourself or a party member, a protective veil is cast on all party members within a radius of 15 yalms. This barrier will prevent damage up to 10% of your maximum HP. So this is really good to help out your healers and your team. So you toss this up during a period of heavy damage, which allows a healer to heal you to trigger it, or our next ability, which is Clemency. Clemency is not a cooldown per se, it is a flat self-heal or a heal that you can use on your party members. It has an intensely strong potency of 1200, and if you use it on a party member, up to 50% of the restored HP goes to you, which is very nice. And then we have Passage of Arms. You can think of this as your big iconic ability, as it has the most flair to it. It'll increase your block rate to 100% and creates a designated cone behind you, which party members can pile in behind you and they will only suffer 85% of all the damage going on in the room. This is one of your big party protection cooldowns that you can pop when the boss is about to do their powerful room-wide AoE that you'll typically find in raids or if you're in a dungeon and you just need some extra shielding. In terms of your damage, you're going to have Fight or Flight. 
a 60 second cooldown that increases your physical damage dealt by 25%. Now this will not work with your Requiescat or any of your special spells like Holy Spirit or Holy Circle. So typically if you're going into a fight, I like to pop my fight or flight first and then begin my rotation. This will buff up all of my physical strikes and I believe it also works on Circle of Scorn. Last, but certainly not least, is Hollowed Ground. This is your big I don't want to die button. Sitting at a 420 second recast time, this renders you impervious to most attacks for 10 seconds. Essentially what this does is 90% of the attacks in game, you for that 10 second period will be immortal. That being said, there are exceptions, certain boss mechanics will break through this, but they do not happen terribly often. So if your healers are down, or if your healers are struggling, or if you just think there's a hit that's about to hit you and you might not survive it, Hollowed Ground is the absolute I won't die button. So keep that in mind, use it sparingly, but also use it when you need it. Lastly, we're going to touch into some things that I consider to be utilities. To start things off, we have Cover. Cover is an ability that allows you, the Paladin, to take all damage for another party member for 12 seconds. It takes 50 of your Oath Gauge, and it can only be used when a member in your party is closer than 10 Yalms. This will not activate with certain attacks in the game, as mentioned with Hollowed Ground, there are always exceptions. So this will allow you to save a party member. If your healer's about to die and you need them to stay up, you can run over and hit them with cover, and whatever damage they were about to take, it will be redirected to you. Keep in mind, however, you might want to pair this with a cooldown, as you might get yourself killed in the process. But it is an absolutely wonderful move to save party members. Following the same theme of cover, we have Intervention. Intervention's on a quick 10 second cooldown, and it reduces a target party member's damage taken by 10% for 6 seconds. The increased effect that it does is it increases damage reduction by another 50% of the effect of Rampart or Sentinel if either are active. So if you've popped your Rampart or Sentinel before doing this, your target party member will have a much nicer shield to protect them. Now, typically for this move, I personally use this if I'm the off tank. If the main tank is about to take a heavy hit, I can quickly cast Intervention on them, and it'll help cushion the blow for them and the healers. That said, though, you can also use it on any party member at your own discretion. We then have Shirk. Shirk is another ability that is used when you're rolling out with another tank. So Shirk is really good for when you need to do tank swaps. For example, let's say you're the main tank and you get a debuff that increases the damage you've taken. If you need to swap with your other tank, you target them, hit Shirk, at which point they'll typically hit Provoke and they'll be able to pick up the boss faster because you've given them a quarter of your own enmity. Provoke is the ability that you use if you are the person who needs to pick the boss off of your fellow tank. So you'll need to keep your own enmity right behind your fellow tank, and when you hit Provoke, it will put you on the top of that enemy's enmity list, and if your partner has given you Shirk, it'll help ensure that you pick up the boss and tank it for as long as that you need to. And now, Iron Will. Just like all tanks, Every tank has a single button that increases their enmity generation. Iron Will is the one for Paladins. Now if we move over here, if you're using the standard Oath Gauge layout, you'll then have a golden glowing sigil behind your Oath Gauge to indicate that Iron Will is up. If you have your gauge in the more simplistic format, you'll also get an indicator telling you that your tanking buff is up. So you're going to want to have that up whenever you are essentially tanking in a dungeon or a raid, because this is what allows you to hold your aggro. And taking a look at the last four utilities here that I typically use. Reprisal is a nice little damage reducer. 
it reduces damage dealt by nearby target enemies by 10% for 10 seconds. You can use this on trash mobs, you can use this on bosses, and that 10% may not seem like much, but it can really make a difference on certain hits. Arm's Length is another ability that can make a surprising difference. This one's on a 120 second cooldown, and it creates a nullifying barrier to most knockback and draw in effects. This means if a boss is about to pull you in closer to hit you with something, or do something that could potentially knock you off the side of the map, 9 out of 10 cases, arm's length will protect you from that and you won't have to worry about moving. Now you will need to hit arm's length a little bit before the enemy does their move, or it might not register, which is not so fun. So when your barrier is struck, it will slow the enemies by 20%. From my observation, this does not work on boss mobs, however, if you're in a dungeon and doing big pulls, this can slow down the trash mobs attacks and make it a much easier experience overall. We also have Low Blow, which is another stun. As Paladin comes with a stun of its own, I typically don't use Low Blow as often, but you can still find places to weave it in here or there. And then we have Interject. Interject is a nice interrupt to cancel out an enemy's spell casting. So if a boss or a trash mob is casting a big spell that's either going to paralyze or hurt the party, you can hit Interject and that will silence that ability as it were. This is going to cover our basics to the Paladin job. Now, this was done from a level 80 perspective, however, the guide should be able to still help you get an idea for how your abilities fall in line, also how they're used as you level up through the game. If you do have any questions at all about the Paladin job, please let me know in the comment section below, and I will answer them as soon as possible. The support to the channel lately has been huge, and we are steadily growing, so I want to thank you all for that. Each view, each like, each subscription, it helps us grow tremendously. And with that said, I'll catch you all in the next video.